Hey guys, welcome to another interesting video at Kodiraku. My name is Mihir Thakkar and in our today's video, we are going to go over an important topic in software engineering that a lot of you are going to encounter in your careers, which is how do you set up an authentication and authorization scheme for a web application or it could be for any of your web services as well. So the first thing that we need to understand is the differences between authentication and authorization. When you are trying to authenticate a user to your web applications, you are trying to see whether they have access to your applications in the first place or not. And once the user has been authenticated, then you want to find out what level of access do they have. So for example, when you share a document with your friend on Google Drive, you can choose what level of access does this person have. Do they get to only view the document? Do you want them to contribute to your document as well? Or they can have full control over your document right so that is determined by the authorization scheme so without any further ado let's see how we can build this now today i'm going to use a python based web framework which is called web2py to implement this scheme a lot of you might want to know how to do this with node.js or with c sharp but since most of our audience are more comfortable with python i have selected to go with you know, this stack the first thing that you should do is make sure that you have web2py framework installed. If not, no, go ahead and download the web2py framework. Once you have downloaded the web2py framework, go to the web2py folder. Start the server by clicking on the web2py.py file. Or you could also run it from the command prompt by saying python and then web2py.py. Okay, let's put the admin password. I'm just going to keep it simple over here and let's say start server now this has opened up the web2py admin console okay let's go inside over here it might ask you to know for the same password that you entered while you started the server and then let's go ahead and create a simple application don't put a complicated name over here let's put something really short and simple go ahead and open up the db.py file now this is the file in web2py framework where we define the database tables. Now you would see that most of these lines are from the scaffolding app. I have not done anything custom over here. The only new line that I have added is this line where I have added an extra field to the auth users table which is the role and based on the role will determine the level of access the user has. Next, head to the default.py file in the controllers folder. This is our middleware and this is where we will be defining all our APIs and that is where we will be protecting them as well. So we have a complete video on how do you create APIs with web2py framework. So if you have not already seen it, I will put the link in description for you. But still let's do some recap over here and we will create a simple API to start off with. So let's go ahead and define a simple API. Let's say this API accepts only one parameter which is email and to see what we got let's just return it in our return statement. Alright so now that this is set up now let's head over to postman and let's call this API and see if we are getting some results. If you are new to Postman, you might want to download the Postman collection that I will share in the description. But if you are already familiar with it, this should be very straightforward for you. And as you see, we are getting the response. Now once you have understood this, also let's look at the different types of authentication methods that are in place. Now there are several ways to look at different types, but one way we could look at it is where is this authentication data stored whether this is stored on server side in the form of cookies or whether it is a token based authentication scheme where the server doesn't even have to store anything and it's completely stateless and we'll see how this is made possible with the use of cryptography now let's do something serious let's create the login api which will be a session based method first that we'll try out i'm going to create a new api called login this a login API will take two parameters email and password. So in web2py framework the request payload is stored in the request.vars variable. 
and you also have parameters that you could access using request.params but we don't need that for now. Let's just make some initial checks to make sure that we don't get any null or empty strings in our parameters and now we'll return an error message if that is true. Now this is the place where we'll be actually calling our database to see if this is a valid user and web2py does most of the stuff for us so this is just a single line that we need to write to make sure that the user is a valid user. Now if the user is valid you will get the user authenticated user object in this user variable or else you will get a none. So I am just going to say if user that means that you have successfully authenticated the user and we can also set the home URL for this user else you will just raise an HTTP 401 which is you no know, unauthorized access. Now before testing this API we haven't added our user credentials in the database first so the first thing that we'll do now is head over to your applications app admin now this is located at your host address slash your application name in this case it is auth slash app admin right and once you are over here click on the first table which is auth underscore users and let's insert our credentials over here all right so let's go ahead and test this out. Let's see if this login API is working. So just like before, we'll put the URL of the login API. Now first we'll test out with an empty email and password. And you see that yes, our if statement is running fine and we are getting the HTTP bad request over here, which says missing email or password. Or you could also now try with wrong credentials and you will notice that we are getting the unauthorized request with the message saying incorrect email or password. Finally go ahead and put your correct credentials and you would notice that we are successfully getting the return dictionary that we added in our controller. Yeah so that was quite straightforward we got the session based login method in. So good thing about session based authentication is your client don't have to do much and you don't have to explain a lot of things to your users who are consuming your APIs. You are essentially handling as long as the client is maintaining the HTTP sessions they should be able to use any other API once they are logged in. So for example let's create a API which needs authentication for the user to use it. So for example if it's a social media platform they could have something like you know, get user messages. Now this get user messages obviously should be allowed only to someone who is authenticated and authorized to have that access right. So let's create this endpoint get user messages which will check if the user is logged in first and only then if it is logged in then it will allow the access to the user. Alright, so I told you that the session based login was good because the clients don't have to handle much complexity. But the downside is you still have to maintain these sessions on your server. And the challenge with that is when you scale up and when you have cluster of servers, you need to find a way to share these sessions amongst the different servers that you might have in your cluster. So it doesn't scale well horizontally and no, that's where the rest APIs were supposed to be helping us. Right, so in that sense we are not you know, completely using the power of REST APIs. So to overcome that what we'll be using is what we call a token based authentication scheme wherein the sessions are not stored on the server side but all the data that we need from a client is encoded which is encrypted in a form of a token. Some people also call it claims. Now these are the one and the same thing there is no difference in them you just encode the user parameters. So you essentially encode everything that you would need from the client in this token or the claims and you send this to your client and with every request that they access they need to send this token back to you. Now you might ask what if the client or the user messes up with your token. Well a good thing about these tokens is if someone tries to mess up with them or tries to manually 
edit them it is very easy for the server to tell that and then obviously you won't give them access and you might think how is how can we do that so for that we'll need to understand the concept of the public private keys all right so first let's understand how the token based authentication scheme works in a token based authentication scheme we'll have a super secret key or our private key that we will save on the server side now this private key we don't want to share it with anyone and then what we'll do is we'll log in the user our usual way the way we did before but instead of setting the session cookie we will encode this token with our private key or in other words we will digitally sign it with our private key now the good thing about these tokens once it is signed is the client can still view it so if you have a jwt token you can you know, try out go to jwt.io and you'll be able to paste your any token over here you'll be still able to view it but unless someone has access to our private key no one can tamper with it and they can't modify the claims over here and even if they do in the decoding process when this token comes back to us we will immediately know that there is something wrong with the token because our private keys won't match and thus we'll be able to discard that request all right so now let's see how we will implement this the first thing that we need to do is install the necessary libraries and once you have installed these libraries let's go ahead and import them in our controller file okay so the next thing that we'll do as you saw is we'll first define a private key right so let's call this our super secret key and let's put a random string over here okay it doesn't have to be a specific length or anything just make sure that it is very difficult for someone to guess this all right so let's create a new api over here we'll call this an authorize api and just like we did before this authorize api will accept two parameters email and password and even if the api says authorize we are actually doing both the authentication and authorization in the same request okay so we'll do the usual checks over here now just like before let's make sure that this is a correct email password combination so we'll use the web2py abstraction to do that and once we have got it now let's give our token to the user right so we'll call this as claims and this claim will put the role of the user based on which you know we'll determine what access do they have in the subsequent request that they make to the server we'll put an expiry date and the key names over here are important you don't want to call it something else now this these are defined in the jwt standard and most libraries that would implement it would have the same key names over here and that is true for pyjwt as well so besides the standard key names you can always add any other data that you want to this claims token okay so once our claims token is defined now let's sign it let's encrypt it with our super secret key and we'll be using the SHA-256 or HS-256 algorithm over here to encode it but as I said the hash algorithm you could use any other hash algorithms and there are some criteria on you know, what makes a good hashing algorithm versus what's not a good one but it, it could be any algorithm that you could use over here but the only thing that you need to make sure is uh, while encoding the token you use the same algorithm and while decoding you use obviously the same one otherwise it won't work all right so once we are done with that let's just return this token to our client okay let's head over to postman and see if this is working yeah it seems to be working let's also verify the token let's copy paste this in jwt.io as you see it's pretty easy for someone to read the contents of this token right but the challenge is until someone knows your private key they won't be able to modify it and send it back to you okay because if they send it back to you and you will decode it you will 
easily you will be able to find out if this one has been you know, messed up with all right so let's write down the method that will check if the token is valid or not so i'm going to define an internal function over here which is check http auth now this is not an api that i'm creating it's just a simple python function all right so the first thing that we will do is check for our jwd token in the http header which will be called as authorization and this is how we do it in web2py so in the http header called as authorization we'll first specify what type of authorization method we are using and in this case we are going to use the string called as bearer and subsequently it will be followed by a space and the the jwt token itself so on the server side we could do something like this to get our token and if the token is not found we can raise an error saying that no auth token was found now the reason we are writing this if condition is we might want to support multiple authorization types so for example if we want to use basic auth in the same api we could still have it over here or it could be an api key that we would want to use all right so now that we have got our token and we know it is of type bearer what line of python code should we write over here to validate our jwt token so if you got it right it is the jwt.decode method and what this will return is will return our the claims object that we had originally submitted to the client so this is how we would go about writing it now let's see how will we modify our get user messages api which is supposed to be protected and we don't want you no know, everyone to access this api so let's say if we want only the role of admin to access this api this is how we would go about protecting it so let's go ahead and use our check http auth method that we just created now this method will return our claims object and once we have the claims object we could check if the claims has the role of admin or not yeah that's it now we are sure that this api can only be accessed by the admin role all right guys that's it for today's video i hope you liked it and you learned something new today if you would like me to make more such videos related to web applications please do mention it in the comments below and as usual do subscribe to our channel because that is what keeps us going goodbye take care